Hearts of Fire and The Nanny won't be seen tonight. Please stay tuned for this special presentation. Well, happy Easter, everyone. This is Billy Corr from the Carolina Circle Mall Wiki. Today is Easter Sunday, March the 27th of 2016. Hope everyone's had a nice Easter today. I know I have. I'm just here enjoying my uh, jelly beans. My Whopper Robin eggs. My uh, blue colored um, peeps. Bottoms up. And your uh, cooler master high performance thermal compound. Wait a minute. Ugh. Arctic Silver 5 tastes much better. Right. Anyway, um, me eating random Easter candy is um, not the purpose of this video. Let's take a little trip back in time, which, um, well, let's be honest here, that's how most of my videos go. <laughs> We're going to take a trip back to Easter of 1996. I believe Easter in 1996 was um, April the 7th that year. I have um, video footage of me from Easter of 1992, 1994, and 1995, but unfortunately nothing of Easter 1996, but I do remember it. And, um... And this involves none other than the Packard Bell Legend 822 CET, of course. Because, let's face it, early part of 1996, that thing was still new to me, and it was, it was the light of my life. <laughs> but another light of my life, when it came to computers at the time, was my Ant's Gateway 2000. And um, I wanted to show something. Does this sit right here? untangled. On my Ant's Gateway 2000, um, it originally, she, which she still has by the way, it was the first computer I ever used and ever saw. I mean, none of you know that story already. But, um, I, um, it had a mouse on it. A very classic style mouse that a lot of people were probably quite familiar with. The mouse her Gateway 2000 had was this, um, Microsoft mouse right here. Your uh, standard issue um, Microsoft compatible mouse from the mid 90s, probably early 90s as well. And um, I look, and as you can imagine, I love that computer quite a bit. Still do to this day. And um, my Packard Bell Legend 822 CDT did and still does use a Packard Bell mouse just like this. Now that was all fine and dandy for me. This, I had nothing against this mouse. But I wanted my Packard Bell back in 96. Uh, excuse me. Shouldn't have eaten that thermal compound. I, I, um, I wanted my Packard Bell back in 96 to be just a little bit more like my Ant's Gateway 2000. And so what I did was I, for Easter that year, I asked for a mouse just like this. And sure enough, I got one that year. And it came in a box much like this. Um, 
This is a Microsoft mouse, um, new in the box. It's been sealed for roughly 20, 21 years. And the mouse I got back in 1996 looked exactly like this one right here. Only difference was um, this one is a PS2 mouse. The one that my parents got for me back in 1996 was a serial mouse, and for whatever reason, we had tr we always had trouble getting that mouse to run on the Packard Bell. We, I don't know why. Um, my dad may have hooked up something wrong, but eventually we wound up going back to the um, Packard Bell mouse because um, we had issues with the um, serial mouse. But anyway, um, you know, here we are on roughly the 20th anniversary of that of getting that mouse. Um, and, you know, I bought this um, this particular um, sealed uh, mouse right here back in um, fall of 2015, just about six months ago, I guess. And it's been sealed in the box for about 20 years now. Usually when I get something like this that's still sealed in the box, I like to keep it still sealed in the box. Um, I'm, I get kind of that way sometimes. And, um, well, I'm going to make an exception today on this Easter 2016. Celebrate the 20th anniversary of me getting a uh, Microsoft serial mouse that never really worked right. We're going to unbox this one, go through the packaging, see what's in here, and we're going to plug it up and set it up on my current Packard Bell Legend 822 CDT. So, stay tuned. <laughs> Okay, before we proceed with the unboxing of the mouse, um, I just want to thank you for your um, concerns that you've had for me over the past few days with my uh, muscle spasms. Um, I'm happy to report that um, even though I still feel kind of uncomfortable in my l lower right portion of the back, um, I haven't had any pain since um, yesterday afternoon. So, um, that is definitely very positive. Um, I, um, like I said, I'm still kind of uncomfortable, but it's, today, ha thankfully, has been the, um, better of the days I've had with this, um, whatchamacallit. And, um, I'm glad that I've been able to enjoy my Easter like normal. So, um, praise the Lord indeed for that. Anyway, um... Here we go. You know, I really hate to do this. <laughs> this has been sealed for 20 years, roughly. And I don't like doing this. I don't like breaking the seal on old software and hardware like this. But, you know what, this is a special occasion. And I have been resisting the temptation since this past fall to open this. And I'm just going to go ahead and just get it over with. Um, I, um, someday I will get another one probably that's also sealed, so it will um, be okay. Scissors here I've had since 1996. So, all right, no turning back now. Let's do this. Actually, if you want to see what's on the back there, there we go. I did show this in my box software collection video um, a few weeks ago, so if you want to get a more better look at all this, uh, go back and watch that. I think it was about three weeks ago today, I want to say, when I uploaded that. But anyway, um, let's get busy. Spot. I don't want to harm the box in any way because I do want to have some kind of form of preservation for this.
Okay, here we go. Uh, I feel so dirty doing this. <laughs> Goodbye, 20 years of protection. Alright. There's our circa 1995 cellophane there. Throw that in the trash can there. Alright. We can now open the lid. And enjoy the goodies within. Oh, got several goodies in here. Okay, first of all, um, we got a registration card which um, Microsoft used um, for all of their products in the early to mid 90s, um, including the for Windows 3.1. Want to want the address of the most important person at Microsoft? So do we. Yes, this is um. So you can get a better look at it there. Not really, I guess. Um, there's a registration card itself. One for um, U.S. residents and one for Canadian residents, eh? That was horribly racist, I'm sorry. <laughs> so, yeah, um... Do you, <laughs> do you use any of the following? Modem? CD-ROM? Online service? <laughs> that is kind of weird, but cool. There's the one. There's the back of the one for uh, Canada. And the one for the United States. Awkward angle there. I'm sorry, folks. We got um, some disc. Again, Microsoft used this type of packaging for years in the '90s with for floppy disk. You were important to us. Register today. How about we don't? But we appreciate you thinking that you're that I'm important to you. Okay, Microsoft Mouse with IntelliPoint software uh, quick reference card. Let's see how this opens. Okay, let me just first let me read this off here. With IntelliPoint, you can replace double clicks with single clicks, assign a task to a two-button click, personalize your on-screen pointers and add animations to button clicks along with over a dozen other useful features. Okay, let's open her up. It shows the two type of connections you could have gotten back in the day, Serial and PS2. As I mentioned earlier, Serial gave me all sorts of issues back in the day. It's a shame, but this is the way things went. Wow, this thing goes so thing opens quite a bit quite far. This is compatible with Windows 95, Windows 3.1, and Windows NT. If you do not have Windows, you can run setup from MS DOS to install the MS DOS version of IntelliPoint. That's cool. There's using your mouse on a CRT monitor. If you're using this on a modern day LCD, Microsoft will come and slap you in the face and contacting Microsoft product support using IntelliPoint and using the IntelliPoint toolbar we'll probably scan all this for um, posterity and anything else in the box? Nope. All that's left is the actual rodent himself we'll call him Jerry ah here we are wow brand new Oh, this is the shiny one, too. Nice. One I got back in the day was not the shiny one. They had kind of a matte version and a shiny version. Let me uh, see if I can show a comparison. Uh, matte on the... Um, shiny on the left, matte on the right. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, you can get out of here. 
and this is indeed PS2 and here we go brand new despite being in that box for 20 years this is a Milesport compatible mouse 2.0 made in Mexico all right let's move over to my uh, Packard Bell and hook her up all right here's the Packard Bell Legend 822 CDT here's our new uh, mouse it's all shiny nice and what we're going to do is um, actually we're not going to plug it directly into the Packard Bell because um, I'm using a KVM switch so I can um, use the same mouse keyboard and monitor with this Legend 822 CDT and my other Legend 822 CDT I have down here which has the as you know the different motherboard and is running Windows 3.1 so, I doubt you'll be able to see this, but I'm going to reach back here to the KVM switch and un unplug the Packard Bell branded mouse. Don't worry, you will be back soon. I just want to use an actual Microsoft mouse for a little while, or um, just to change things up a little bit. Uh, you can go over there, there you go. And we're going to untie our uh, cord here. Yes, I still feel bad about opening that package. <laughs> Ugh, keep doing that. Alright. And plug this nice and shiny mouse up to the KVN. Get it untangled first. So this mouse has never been used before. There we go. Yes, I do realize I made a video about another Microsoft mouse just a few weeks ago. But this one is still unique because the other one didn't have the original packaging and was a different mouse entirely. Okay, real quick. Where did I put oh, yes. Need to get my floppy disk that came with the mouse. They are right here. I'm gonna open them up, see what we got. Get my 20 year old scissors. Oops, cut them in the wrong spot. Nice, nice work there. Okay, we've got two different discs. We got one for MS DOS and Windows. And disc two, uh, MS DOS and Windows. Uh, okay, here's disc two. Disc one. Don't know what the difference is, but I guess we will find out. Anyway, let's fire the Packard Bell up. Monitor on. All right. Test smoke. I mean, uh, whatever. Monitor right, turned over here so you can get a chance of seeing it. Okay, mouse initialize. That's a good sign. Turn my white noise off. Never any room in here. Hey. All right, boot it into Windows ninety five. All right, mouse is working. Okay, we can left click, we can right click. All right. But I still want to install the software so we can get our IntelliPoint features. Okay, here is disk one. Okay, 
Okay, I'm going to assume it's A colon slash setup. Okay, I love how slow floppy disk can be. By the way, anyone want an AMD Athlon X2? Too bad, I'm keeping it. Okay, set up program one, install the Microsoft IntelliPoint software on your computer. Simply follow the instructions. You know what, I probably should have made a copy of this disk first before I put this information in. Oh uh, well. Really poor. Okay, typical or custom installation. We'll do custom, see what we get. Um, okay, we'll take tools and controls, toolbar, and the online user's guide. Um, do not need MS-DOS stuff. Um, we've already got MS-DOS dro mouse drivers installed. I don't want them conflicting. Such a shiny mouse, I bet you I'm gonna get this covered in all sorts of fingerprints. I wonder if it's going to ask us for disk 2 or not. Yes, it will. Okay. Disk 1, you can get out of here. Disk 2, you can go in there. Looks like it's copying over some custom cursors. This looks a little bit older from the IntelliPoint software that, that Microsoft Home Mouse came with we saw the other week. That was on the Packer Bell Legend 1510 Supreme. Okay, it's going to be installing into the Microsoft Input Device um, Program Group, where I also have drivers for my Sidewinder 3D Pro joystick installed. Okay, we're going to need to restart now. Right, take the disc out. I don't want to wait just for the computer to shut down. Oh, that wasn't long. Yeah, I don't know why that that mouse we got back in 1996 um, didn't work right on our Packard Bell. So I did hook up that Microsoft Home mouse to this Packard Bell um, when I first got it a few weeks ago, which is also a serial mouse and it worked just fine on here. My theory is maybe my dad um, didn't connect it right or something back in 96. We'll never know. <laughs> I'll just play. I'll, you know what? I'm just going to blame the Power Mac Galaxy. <laughs> okay. This automatically opened up a mouse properties window. And um, I would install this on my other um, 822 CDT, but Packard Bell installs of Windows 3.1 actually came preloaded with this 
pretty much the same software, so um, there's really no need to do that. Okay, um, click the button to set your primary button. Don't need to do that. Both buttons. What's this? Click the button to set how you press both buttons. Okay, I don't know what we just did, but... There we go. You can assign... A, oh, there we go. You can assign a both button shortcut to both buttons. Okay, I guess we can set it to... Uh, do something I really don't care for it to do, apparently. Uh... Okay, that's pointless. <laughs> and the nice thing about this is, um, which was probably the price of admission for a lot of people back in the day, you get custom mouse pointers. Right now we're set to Windows Standard. Hey look, I'm merging the cursors. <laughs> there it goes. It's clarding. Okay, we get animated hourglasses. That's kind of cool. Get entertainment, which looks absolutely stupid and ridiculous, if you ask me. Food. Everyone loves food. Your cursor becomes a corn on the cob. He calls logic. Yeah, that's kind of stupid. <laughs> And you can make your mouse cursor look like an actual mouse. I think we did this on the home mouse the other week. Well, March 2016 has been the month of the mouse. Okay, we get nature. And your regular cursor becomes a tree limb. Get the ocean and your cursor becomes a seashell which comes in handy when you're playing a Freddy Fish game even though it's a humongous entertainment game so you have to use their cursor no matter what <laughs> so that's kind of pointless there reptiles and ugh, I don't like snakes so yeah we're not gonna be doing that and sports ugh, I don't like sports so we're not gonna be doing that either so I guess we'll just go back to Windows Standard because I'm a sane person Go to visibility. Oh yeah, we showed this the other week. This is really cool. The sonar. If you lose your cursor, you can just hit the control key. And it'll tell you where your cursor is. Make the pointer disappear when you begin typing. Uh, it sounds like fun, but probably not. Trails. Which is kind of cool. Um, you can set, like, pointer trails which um, would come in handy if you're using this on a um, laptop with a really bad passive matrix display makes it easier to find your cursor orientation use this feature to tell the software which way is up move the mouse in the direction you define as up yeah you know what we're not gonna break anything oh boy activities okay um snap to um Snap pointer to default button and dialog boxes. I used to do this back in the days of like Windows ME, Windows XP, the early days of Windows XP that is. Um, seemed cool at the time, but um, after a while it got kind of annoying. <laughs> Focus, select window or icon by moving pointer over title bar. I think we did this in the Microsoft Home Mouse video. Let's just uh, open up the recycle bin and Okay, I guess we'll open my computer as well. Okay, select window or icon by moving pointer over title bar. That's what I'm doing, it's doing nothing. It's a bit stupid, if you ask me. So I'm just going to disable you in case you show up when I least expect it. General, we just got a Microsoft PS2 port mouse. Effects? Okay, what's this? 
use this feature to associate animation with mouse events. Okay, let's see what this does. Okay, apparently if you double click, you get a nail. And you don't. Magic. I'm feeling like an idiot right now. <laughs> Why are you not working? Okay, weather. Are you going to do anything? I double click, but it doesn't do anything. Oi. Okay. If you want to be a jerk about it, you don't have to do it then. Uh, seriously, though, I'm probably doing something wrong. Okay, here you can set the double click speed. We're not going to do that. Don't want to break it. And you can use a single click in place of a double click. Definitely don't want to do that because it's just a recipe for disaster, it seems like. And pointer speed. Got acceleration, increased pointer speed as you move the mouse faster. Pointless. Smart speed, slow down pointer over icons, buttons, and other controls. I can see where that would make sense, but I really don't want that. Alright, that was kind of fun there. I think I'll keep this mouse on here for a couple of weeks, just to change things up a bit. What version of IntelliPoint that is to begin with? So when I image the disk, I can name the files properly. Uh, excuse me. You know, uh, what of this, uh, I don't even see, like, the, uh, IntelliPoint toolbar. I wonder if it's in the, uh, start menu. Let's check that out. Uh, okay. There we go. Yep, IntelliPoint toolbar. And you get the uh, magnify. That's kind of cool, kind of an early version of accessibility for Windows. Jay Wakefield, if you're watching, this part's for you. Hope you find this kind of cool. This is a magnifier for Windows 95. And uh, presumably Windows 3.1 as well. And this is line lock. Oh, I see. I can't really explain what that does, but it's kind of cool. Auto scroll. Not doesn't really do anything. Customize toolbar, IntelliPoint tools and controls will probably just take us back to yep. Just as I thought. I do still wonder what version of this it is. No, I didn't want that. You fool. I'll just probably name it IntelliPoint 1995. Okay, I guess that's about it. I guess we can um, test it with a game. Uh, I'll just try Ski Free, it's, since it's already there on the desktop. Ouch. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> I'm not doing my best tonight, am I? Well, at least I got a high score. Alright, we'll keep going until the Yeti gets us, which is when we get to the to 1985 meters. Still got a ways to go. Ouch. 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 Oh, 
Alright, where are you, Yeti? Okay, we're getting there. And there we go. I would have gotten away from him if I hadn't crashed into that tree. Oh, bad memories there, folks. Bad memories. Anyway, um... 20 years, never been open until today. This is Billy Core, wishing you a happy Easter and signing off.